Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. Today we've got the infotainment breakdown on the 2023 Lexus RC Coupe. In this video, we're gonna look at how the gauge cluster works, take a look at the 10.3 inch updated touchscreen infotainment display, see how Android Auto and Apple CarPlay look, and wrap things up. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. This awesome flare yellow color, and the big rumbly five liter V8, it is the Lexus RCF. Important distinction there, but this video will apply to the more pedestrian versions of the RC as well. I'm a big fan of the RC. I feel like it's often forgotten about in both the new and used car markets, but I've enjoyed having it around this week for a lot of fun, uh, canyon st sort of driving as well as just daily use. So if you do want to see more on the Lexus RC, check the link in the description. We've got a sound system review, some DM test drives. We had this car back in 2020 as well. So very familiar and I'm a fan. Starting up here in the front, this gauge cluster really hasn't changed much since the car was introduced back in, oh, I think 2015 model year, I wanna say. So it's been out for a while, but still very functional, if a little bit busy up here. Starting in the very top left, you see outside temperature, engine temperature, and oil temperature. I should say coolant temp and oil temp. And apparently this screen is gonna keep popping up if we don't start the engine. So if it, if it starts getting in the way, we're just gonna start the car up here. Very much in the center, you see our large digital tachometer, as well as a digital speedometer in the middle there and our gear indicator. It's also showing you which drive mode we're in. You see we're in normal now, but if I use this rotary over on the side, we can switch to sport, sport plus. We get different tachometer layouts for each of those. In fact, over in sport plus, this is actually kind of strange you lose engine oil and coolant temperatures. You only get uh, fuel up in the top left. Oh, it's because it's in the center. Just kind of rearranges it. That's interesting. Okay, and then you can also press over here an eco and then get sort of an eco indicator instead of a tachometer. Interesting way to do it. Over in the bottom right, you see a very small analog speedometer. Can't say I've really looked at that at all while driving. However, it is kind of cool looking. I'm okay with analog speedometers in a car like this as long as it doesn't take up uh, useful space and it looks good and it, it does both of those here. Then in the bottom left you get a multi-function screen that you customize with these controls on the right side of the steering wheel. Now again I think it, uh, it might be kind of annoying having the screen so we'll always pop up but we'll see what happens. We've got our miles per gallon, range to empty, again miles per gallon there, tire pressures, looks like we need to take a look at that front right, a little low, gear position if the car were running, a way to change from kilometers per hour over to miles per hour, and a bit of a calm screen using either the right and left buttons or this screen toggle button, right? Is that, is that what this does? Yeah, oh, I guess this one always goes to the infotain information screen. But going over to the right, we get some performance gauges. We've got a G-force meter, the rear wing position in this carbon package, a lap timer, and uh, more lap information right there. Continuing over to the right, a compass. If you had navigation set, you'd get navigation instructions. Continuing to the right, you have media information, and you can actually go up and down on these to go through your different sources. And what do we have here? Safety information. So this is uh, your cruise control and your lane keeping assist info. Continuing on, if you had any warnings about the car, you'd get those right there. And then the, inf the ability to change settings for curve reduction speed. So if you've got cruise control set and you go around a curve on the highway, it's gonna slow you down if that's on. Cancel. Lane tracking assist, different settings for your gauge cluster. You might experience if you have an RCF that when you get up to the point where you need to shift gears, it'll beep at you. You can actually turn that off with, where was that? Was that in the meter settings? Um, yes, rev indicator, if you wanna have that on or off. That, it can get kind of annoying, so I definitely have that off. You can also, in your uh, custom mode, you can change whether how you want your gauge cluster to look. Just some default settings in there as well, as well as different languages, English, French, and Spanish. An eco indicator, so, so uh, if you're driving this around, maybe you got the car new, you'll notice when you're driving calmly, you get a little green eco indicator, and I don't like that being on and off, so I simply turn that off permanently. Oh, and right here you can change what this, um, what screen that button will take you directly to. So a good amount of customization there within the gauge display. But the big news for 2023 is 
this touchscreen infotainment system. You still have the trackpad down here, which is the same as we've seen in this model since it came out, but if you get annoyed by using that, you can reach up here and touch around the screen. It works the same, it simply gives you the ability to touch it, and you can see some of those uh, kind of teething issues if you, say, have the map open here. I have not figured out a way to get from this map back to your main home screen via the touch screen. I've always had myself having to come down here and press menu. But I'm not gonna be touching the screen much because I wanna keep the fingerprints off it and have it looking good for you. Let's start by pressing this menu button down here on the trackpad. Bottom left, you see destination. That's going to give you the ability to go directly to save destinations or put in a new destination from your satellite navigation, this car being navigation equipped. The second option on our menu screen is audio. That's gonna give you quick toggles to get to any of your connected sources. Right now, we've got AM, FM, Sirius XM, and Android Auto. Let's see if we go to Sirius XM, let's see how it looks. You've got your favorites over on the right, this, the channel that you're on in the middle, and then some options on the left for things like your sound settings, changing sources, or maybe seeing a list of radio stations based on genre. So if we only wanted to see rock stations, this would give us any of the various rock stations. Continuing along, we get phone. You can either go up and choose one of those quick toggles or go to phone and then you have all your contacts. You can even go up and do a keypad, dial it in with either the trackpad or by touching it. Continuing on, we have an apps screen. However, you have to be connected via the Inform application on a device to, to access that. It's not like newer cars that have apps built in. So we're not gonna be utilizing that functionality right now. Let's skip over Android Auto for the moment and head over to Info. You've got driving information, how economically you've been driving over the last 15 minutes. If there are any traffic incidences, incidents near you, either on the current road or nearby, the system will tell you of that right there. Weather information, that's nice to have. It'll tell me current weather, and then you can view a three-day, six and 12-hour forecast broken down. And this is kind of cool, actually getting a map right here in your car. I find this remarkably useful, especially when I live in the Northwest and you could have systems moving in. I wanted to be able to see those right on the car. Going back, got vehicle alert history. If there's been anything like low tire pressure or needing to change the oil, that would tell you right there. And an electronic owner's manual built right in. So if you're confused about how to use a certain functionality, you can enter here, you see these cool animations. And you can search in a variety of ways, including a table of contents, sort of down there, or keywords. So say if I were just curious, let's see if it knows how large the fuel tank is in here. Not exactly what I was looking for though. I bet if I looked at capacities, it would probably have it. Hmm, I guess not. So maybe not quite as useful in some ways as a book manual, but still something there for you. Over in setup, we are greeted with the ability to change the clock, your time zone, your daylight savings time, and simply just having it adjusted by GPS, usually the easiest way to do it. Bluetooth settings, if you're going to pair up a device, you're probably gonna to wanna to do it through here, although it seems to have me locked out right now, perhaps because I'm connected via Android Auto right now. Below that, you have audio settings. Nothing of super importance. This isn't actually your sound adjustments. This is just things like displaying cover art while you're listening to music and dealing with smart favorites from the radio, your favorite FM and Sirius XM genres. I don't think too many people are playing DVD audio anymore, but some settings in there for that as well. Phone settings. Again, the ability to connect a phone. If you want to make your ringtones louder or quieter, or adjust what notifications you see from your phone being connected via Bluetooth. This is where you'd adjust that. Voice, do we actually have voice controls in here? Voice volume, ah, for your voice guidance and prompts, you can adjust the way those work. Vehicle settings, information for maintenance. Oh, this is kind of cool, look at this. So engine oil, it says we've still got 3,200 miles on that. How about our filter? also 3200, tire rotation, 
Ooh, not set. Okay, so in theory, you could go through and set reminders for all of these. That's that's pretty cool. That's a dedication to maintenance right there. Even transmission fluid, um, personal ones you can you can put in there. Air filters, batteries. That's that's pretty smart. You can even call your dealer right here if you need to set something up. Navigation settings, areas to avoid. Wow, you could actually make it so that. Uh, you avoid a certain area. Hmm. <laughs> That's kind of Lexus-y, if you ask me. That's fun. Uh, detailed navigation settings. Oh, wow. A lot of different things you can customize in here. Low fuel warning pop-ups. Street names with the guidance. Uh, intersection zoom out. So you can really get in there and set some of these detailed settings. If you own this car and you care about that sort of stuff, you can really spend time doing that. Wi-Fi hotspot, so if you pay for it, Lexus will give you a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot in here, and you can, I don't know, let your passenger or your own devices use it if you don't have data connections on them. Here's how you connect up to that Inform app suite while using your phone connected. Traffic information, you can have traffic be in there, you can have the car uh, avoid it if possible and give you warnings about it. And that's about it for useful settings here and set up. So let's go back and show you how to pair up a device. Up in Bluetooth, we're going to add new device. And now it's searching, so I'm going to take my phone here, go to the Bluetooth settings, and then as soon as I open my Bluetooth settings, it popped up on the car, OnePlus Nord, right there. Click that to start pairing in any second here. Yep, I got a Bluetooth pairing request. I'm going to hit pair. And just like that, after a few minutes, we're going to allow all of the permission requests. It says connected. Now I could use this device for playing music, and if I wanted to use Android Auto, I would plug it in via cable. I'd also get my phone calls through here, phone calls and text messages. Before we get into Android Auto, I should note that we also have a little side screen here that we can toggle. If we bring that up, then we see right now we've got trip information for how fuel efficient we've been. And then up in the top right, you can do a map. So it's kind of a split screen setup here. You still got your main screen going on over here. And then you've got your map over on the right side. Same thing, you can have audio up over there. So if you want your Sirius XM playing or your climate screen. So you can have climate things. If you don't want to do them physically for some reason, you'd rather do them on the screen. You can manage that there. Let's close that out and go to the last element of our toggle bar here, the climate. Again, you can adjust things like temperature, fan speed, where the air is blowing at you right here from the, from the touch screen, even have an eco option. But if it's me, I prefer doing it with the physical controls there. Speaking of physical controls, you do have physical controls here for the radio, media, seeking, playing and pausing, tuning knob, volume knob, and ejecting your... CDs right there, which is something you don't see in many cars anymore. All right, let's take a look at Android Auto, plug our device back in, and there it is popping right up, Android Auto. It takes up the full screen, works pretty nice. You can see I've got Waze coming up right now, and again, you can reach up and touch it or toggle through things using the trackpad. Not exactly how Android Auto was intended to be used, but still possible. Let's look at how Google Maps is gonna look. There we are, Google Maps coming up nice. You can, again, move around and do manual zoom toggling right there, or you can reach up and pinch to zoom. How about YouTube Music? Right now we got some T-Pain going. Let's, let's hit the super mix and see what it comes up with for us. Some Tyga. I don't know how many Lexus RC buyers are listening to Tyga, but Hey, more power to you. And, oh, let's take a quick look at the dialer. There you got it right there. You can see a little bit of the split screen going on. Okay, let's turn off our Apple device that's doing some recording and see what an, uh, Apple CarPlay looks like. I'll show you how to pair that up. I'm going to reach in here unplug our Apple Car or Android Auto device, 
plug in my cable for Apple CarPlay. My phone saying allow CarPlay with Lexus RC while locked, yes. And just like that, we are hooked up. You can see Apple CarPlay right here as an option. Coming up nice and large, full screen, looking good. There's all your apps. That's how your home screen is gonna look. Let's head up here to YouTube Music. Hit the super mix. What is the Apple playing today? Some Godsmack. This is an Alyssa song right here. She's been jamming out to that. If you're an RC buyer, what are you into more? Godsmack or Tyga? <laughs> That's how you're now playing looks. And if you head back to the home screen, you see it up there on the right. And let's look at the dialer real fast. There it is. Okay, one last thing before we wrap up. Let's take a look at voice controls. Uh, where are we at here? Before you start, consider viewing the available video tutorials. No. Don't care. Uh, find a Starbucks. Showing results for Starbucks. Select the one you want. To navigate to this point of interest, say go there. Go there. Starting guidance for a new route. Okay, so a little bit more of a rudimentary system, but still works. Still setting the navigation there. Let's see if we can cancel it. Cancel navigation. Route canceled. And you can also do things with your climate and other aspects of the vehicles, like turn the air conditioning off. Turning AC off. And there you go. See, it's adjusted right there. But I need that on. <laughs> All right, so there it is, the tech suite here in the Lexus RC. Hope you found that helpful. If you have any other questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll try to answer them retroactively. And if you do want to see more on the car, check the link in the description. We've got the Mark Levinson sound system breakdown, a members-only test, and a DM review. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.